Hello, and welcome to STEMtastic Hispanic Science Heroes. My name is Isaiah West, and I'm with the Prince George's County Memorial Library System. Today, we're gonna to be learning about some of the really cool accomplishments of some Latinx and Hispanic scientists that you may or may not have heard of. These people did and found some amazing things through their studies that helped people in many ways. Let's start learning. The first Mexican-born scientist to win a Nobel Prize in Chemistry, Mario Molina discovered the serious environmental threat posed by chlorofluorocarbon gases, or CFCs. Along with fellow chemist Sherwood Rowland, Molina found that CFCs, chemicals commonly used as refrigerants and colloquial known as freon, released into the atmosphere were contributing to ozone depletion. Astrophysicist France A. Cordova was most recently the director of the National Science Foundation, a federal agency that develops programs to advance all fields of scientific discovery. She was nominated for the position in 2014 by President Barack Obama. Before she spent her days overseeing America's science and scientific education programs, Cordova conducted important research on X-ray and gamma ray sources accretion disks, and black holes, publishing more than 150 scientific papers. In 1993, she became the first female NASA chief scientist. Father of singers Joan Baez and Mimi Farina, Mexican-American physicist Albert Baez was the co-inventor of the X-ray reflection microscope. Though he created the device which allows scientists to examine living cells in 1948, it's still considered a crucial scientific tool to this day. A pacifist, he refused a series of defense industry positions during the Cold War arms race, instead conducting research and teaching physics at the University of the Redlands, Baghdad University, MIT, and Harvey Mudd College. In 1993, astronaut Ellen Ochoa became the first Hispanic woman to go to space. She first served on a nine-day mission aboard the Space Shuttle Discovery, where she and a team of astronauts studied the Earth's ozone layer, then returned to space three more times, spending nearly 1,000 hours in orbit. Today, Ochoa, who holds NASA's Distinguished Service Medal, serves as the director of the Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas. And that leads to today's experiment, where we're going to talk about how the Space Shuttle Discovery made its way into space using something called combustion. In a combustion reaction, a substance reacts with oxygen from the air and transfers energy to the surroundings as light and heat. The products of combustion reactions are called oxides. Let's do a quick demo. To show an example of combustion, we're gonna use two things you have in your house. We're going to use a little baking soda. I'm putting about a half a teaspoon into a bowl. And then we're going to use a little bit of vinegar. And we're just going to pour a little bit of that right on top. As you see, we get a little bit of a fizz. So let's add just a little bit more. We're starting to fizz, so let's just pour the rest out. You see it grows higher and higher as we go. And that is an example of combustion where two products are creating energy. Now that we've seen how combustion works, let's talk a little bit how it works in a rocket engine. In a rocket engine, fuel and a source of oxygen called an oxidizer are mixed and exploded in a combustion chamber. The combustion produces hot exhaust, which is passed through a nozzle to accelerate the flow and produce thrust. For a rocket, the accelerated gas, or working fluid, is the hot exhaust produced during this combustion. Let's take another look at our experiment. So in this, our fuel would be the vinegar, and our oxidizer would be our baking soda. And when they are combined, they have a reaction where gas is formed, and you can see that 
as the bubbles start to form within the vinegar. This is a different working fluid than you would find in a turbine engine seen here or a propeller-powered aircraft. Turbine engines and propellers use air from the atmosphere as the working fluid, but rockets use the combustion exhaust gases. In outer space, there is no atmosphere, so turbines and propellers cannot work there. This explains why a rocket works in space, but a turbine engine or a propeller does not work. Now that we've learned a little bit about combustion, let's learn about a few more scientists before we get to our rocket building. Born in New York City in 1929, Puerto Rican-American pediatrician and healthcare advocate Helen Rodriguez Trias helped improve access to public health services for women and children in both the United States and Puerto Rico. She was the first Hispanic president of the American Public Health Association. In 2001, she was awarded the Presidential Citizens Medal for her work on behalf of people with HIV and AIDS. Born in Buenos Aires in 1968, physicist Juan M. Maldacena studies the relationship between quantum gravity and quantum field theories. Currently a faculty member at the Institute for Advanced Studies, he has been awarded the Fundamental Physics Prize in 2012 and appeared on the Einstein's Dream episode of PBS's Big Ideas. Maldacena's research on the duality of conjecture was so groundbreaking the participants of a 1998 string theory conference wrote a song to honor him called the Maldacena, sung and danced to the tune of the Macarena. While much of Maldacena's work is tough reading for non-physicists, he has also written several explanations of his work on quantum theory for general audiences, including a popular 2007 Scientific American article tantalizingly entitled The Illusion of Gravity. Mexican-American botanist Inez Mejia discovered two new plant genera and 500 new plant species, and she didn't even start collecting plants until she was 51 years old. Born in 1870 in Washington, D.C. to a Mexican diplomat father, Mejia spent many years as a social worker before enrolling as an undergraduate at the University of California, Berkeley, and discovering her passion for botany. In the 1910s and 1920s, she traveled thousands of miles around Mexico, South America, and Alaska, collecting some 145,000 plant specimens in just 13 years. Today, 50 plant species are named for her. Nobel Prize winning biochemist Cesar Milstein opened new doors in the diagnosis and treatment of disease with his 1975 study on monoclonal antibodies. Milstein and his team developed a technique for the unlimited production of monoclonal antibodies, a type of antibody made by identical immune cells. Thanks to Milstein's work, monoclonal antibodies are now used in everything from diagnostic tests to the treatment of several autoimmune diseases. Aren't these scientists amazing? All of the work they do is so interesting, and if you're interested in learning more about them and the work that they've done, please go to Gale in Context Biography. It is on our website at www.pgcmls.info slash online dash resources. All of these resources are in alphabetical order. Today's experience is going to be based on Ellen Ochoa's time in the Space Shuttle Discovery. First, I wanted to give you just a little bit of information about the rocket that we're going to be talking about. So Space Shuttle Discovery was active from 1984 to 2011, and it is the third of five fully operational orbiters to be built by NASA. Over 27 years of service, it launched and landed 39 times, gathering more space flights than any other spacecraft to date. Like other shuttles, the shuttle has three main components, the Space Shuttle Orbiter, a central fuel tank, and two rocket boosters. Nearly 25,000 heat-resistant tiles cover the orbiter to protect it from high temperatures on re-entry. 
Discovery was the first operational shuttle to be retired in 2011, followed shortly by Endeavour and then Atlantis. The shuttle is now on display at the Stephen F. Udvar Hazy Center of the Smithsonian National Air and Space Museum in the Chantilly area of Fairfax County, Virginia. Ellen Ochoa's mission, STS-56, had a primary payload of an atmospheric laboratory seen in this photo designed to collect data on the relationship between the sun's energy output and Earth's middle atmosphere and how these factors affect the ozone. Now that we've learned about combustion, rockets, and the space shuttle discovery, it's time to get started on our hands-on experiment for the day. Today, we're going to make our own rockets like the ones used to get the space shuttle discovery into space. And we are only going to use baking soda and vinegar for our combustion. Here's what we're going to need. First, we're going to need a recycled bottle. It can be a soda bottle or a water bottle. We're also going to need a cork of some kind. A rubber cork is best. We're also going to need some kind of skewer or pencil or dowels, whatever you have lying around. We'll also need some kind of tape. I'm using washi tape. We're also going to need a paper towel. You're only going to need one though. You're also going to need the baking soda and the vinegar from before. Before we get started building, here's the list of all the materials. Don't forget kids, always do things like this with parental supervision. First step we're going to do is take our bottle and one of our sticks, whichever kind you've done, and then we're going to use tape to put the stick on to the bottle. So just be sure that you get enough tape to go all the way around the bottle. It's okay if you have a little extra. Extra is better than not enough. And we are going to tape it directly on. Don't worry if this is a little bit difficult at first. Once you get the hang of the first round of tape, it will be easier. If your washi tape isn't working, like mine is a little difficult here, feel free to use duct tape. It's a lot stickier and your, your sticks or your dowels aren't going to move as much. And once we get this in place, round two, will be much easier. And once that fourth stick is attached, you'll want to just take the rest of your tape. Never hurts to do a second round just to make sure that your dowels will stay in place. Once you've finished your first wrap of tape, you'll have all four of your dowels in place. Make sure that they're as even as you possibly can. And then you're going to do the rest of your tape until it's adequately stuck and it's decorated exactly the way that you want. Now that we are taped and we are decorated, it is time for our next step in this process. But as you can see, here is the base of your rocket. You'll tip it upside down and that's how we'll launch. Next, we're going to need our paper towel, our baking soda, our vinegar, and our bottle. First, we're going to take half a teaspoon of baking soda. 
and we are going to put it in the center of our paper towel. And then we are going to fold this paper towel. And you're going to want to do that really snugly. And then we're going to roll it up just a little bit more, making it really nice and compact. And then press it down because we're going to want it to keep this shape. Because once we let go, we want to be sure that no baking soda gets out. Next, you're going to need to grab a measuring cup and your vinegar. And we are going to pour about four tablespoons of vinegar into this measuring cup. And then we are going to take our rocket and pour the vinegar inside. And once you've done this, you have your fuel and your oxidizer ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and put my cork in as I prepare to launch. Now what we need to do to prepare for our launch. We need our rocket, we need our paper towel filled with baking soda, and we're going to need our cork. So you'll notice I switched to the silicone cork after my other cork did not work because everything was leaking around it. All you'll need is something that will stop up the bottle and fit snugly, which this does. What you'll do is put your paper towel in your bottle, but you don't want to put it all the way through. And then as we get ready for the launch, we will use our cork to push the paper towel down, we will fit our cork snugly, and we will flip it over and wait for the launch. Oh, and there it went. This launch was a success in that it did get up off the ground, but play around with this experiment to see if you can get yours to launch further. Now, what do you think we could have done differently? Obviously, my rocket did not shoot up very high. And what probably caused that is there wasn't enough pressure that could build up in the bottle. This can be changed by getting a cork that fits a little bit tighter in the lid of your bottle, which would help the pressure build up before the cork releases. Also, you can see that because my skewers were not on very well, I had to mess with them as I was putting it down, which caused me to be in the way of the rocket. Had my rocket shot up as high as it could have, it would have hit me in the face, which wouldn't have been very good. So don't forget, put your rocket down and step away, even if your rocket falls over. Those are just some of my suggestions for how I could have done it differently. Do you have any suggestions for ways that it would have worked better? Maybe ways to make it shoot up higher? Should I have used more vinegar, more baking soda, a different bottle? Let me know in the comments. Let's take one more look at this launch. I'm putting my paper towel in and flipping it over. And there is the launch. Did you try this at home? If so, tell us about your launch in the comments. Or if you have a video of your launch or a photo of your rocket, feel free to put that in the comments as well. We'd love to see how you turn this experiment into your own. Are you interested in learning more about some of the scientists we talked about today? Here are three titles for you to explore within our library catalog. If you need help finding these titles, feel free to give the library a call. And don't forget to check out our website. 
Our Heritage Hub for Hispanic Heritage Month can be found at www.pgcmls.info slash Hispanic dash heritage. And if you enjoyed today's program, please be sure to join us for as many Hispanic Heritage Month programs as you can. Here are a couple of our upcoming programs for you to take a look at. Thank you so much for joining us today and watching our video on Hispanic Science Heroes. We hope that you learned something new and that you have fun building as many rockets as it takes to get you to where you would like to go. Have a great day.